<laughs> yes, sure, Mark. Well, you, you need a mark of some sort. I guess. Oh, welcome back to hey. Smash Attack. Mm. This is now our fifth episode. Yeah, and now we have look, a sweet-ass logo. Look at that sweet-ass splash screen. Mm. Oh, it's nice. Delicious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Interesting fact before we go on and actually talk about Smash Brothers. <laughs> and you know what I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. While I was making this fucking logo, of all of all the fonts that I thought that it was going to be some type of special font or something to make this, it's Times New fucking Roman. Times New Roman to make this goddamn font to make this logo. Yeah, so Smash Brothers 4 uses Times New Roman, which I find infinitely awesome and hilarious all at the same time. Uh, My god. So, I thought that was kind of interesting and funny. Yes. So, first off, I am going to remember this week, let's go through the photos. Yes. Uh, let's see, starting on Monday... We got a really nice, really close-up shot of Olimar's suit mm -hmm. and the yellow Pikmin. Yep. It's amazing the level of detail that they actually are putting into this. Yeah. I mean, you can see the whistle that's embedded in his helmet. That's a first. Yeah. The thing that infuriates me, and it's not with this picture, it's with the whole photo a day thing in and of itself. The game is 1080p. So fuck it, just release a 1080p image that we can blow up and make 1080p. Yeah. For the love of God. I mean, this is just infuriating to me. I always have to squint and try to get some of the details. Right. But that gripe aside. I, I think the reason why they, they do that is just so that it doesn't take forever to load on their website. It's just something that could be. A, it's a quick thumbnail. Because it is even smaller that when you when you're on their website, it's it's smaller until you actually click on it and it's like blown up. But even then, it's not that much bigger. Yeah, no, it's it really isn't at all. But so. yeah, not much. I mean, detail on Alamar's suit. That's nice. Uh, Tuesdays is the Fire Emblem stage that you know we already spoke about. Right. Last episode. It's neat. Well, we're not sure if it's Fire Emblem. It says that it's... Uh, I'm sorry. Kid, it says it's Kid Icarus, but we, we're assuming that it's Fire Emblem just because it looks... No, we're, we're assuming wrong. It is Kid Icarus. No. I wish it was, That's... though. <laughs> I'm sure there will be Fire Emblem stages. I well, have no doubt. Well, because the only... I just remember that the only reason why I said it was a Fire Emblem is because in uh, in Brawl, it was... A stage that it had similar platforming in a sense. Yeah. And the background was the same, where it was on a castle. So that's why I thought, oh shit, Fire Emblem. So who are they going to announce next for their, you know, their Fire Emblem ro roster? Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I think that's definitely a, a Kid Icarus stage. Yeah. So, you know, Fire Emblem is going to be in it. It's just a matter of time. Yep. Uh, let's see. Screenshot after that, we've got the Animal Crossing villager hurling Pit's arrow back at Pit, mm -hmm. which is phenomenal. I love that concept. Yeah, where they can take, uh, where the villager can take people's projectiles and throw them right back at them. Yeah, I mean, it seems like a better version of Game and Watch's bucket. Because how often did you ever get anyone to get the bucket filled? His down B was pull out a bucket and catch any projectile. And once you caught three of them, the bucket was filled. The next time you did it, you'd throw shit on people. Right. I, I don't think I ever managed to pull that off in a game. Yeah. This, you can at least try to catch something and hurl it back. I like that. I really like that. Yeah, it just seems less complicated. And, like, as I'm sure there's not a lot of... I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't use that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I mean, of I, know, I know you even play Game & Watch a lot, or a decent amount. And, uh, Fucking octopus. I never even see you use it, ever. No, fuck the bucket. Yeah, because it's too, it's too much to do, because you have to collect three times. And... It's too situational. Yeah. 
And if you miss, you're left exposed for so long. Mm. It takes forever to take that bucket and put it away. Well, there you go. Uh, the next one definitely looks like a Pikmin level, a new Pikmin level. Mm -hmm. Got Donkey Kong hanging off what looks like a rusty sardine can. <laughs> yeah. So at least it looks like we've got a new Pikmin level. And anything Pikmin related, the fact that I think it takes place on a post- Wasteland Earth is phenomenal, right? And I'm I'm just very excited for any of the Pikmin levels. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Yeah, um, it, it's not much to really tell with this level because it's so it's such a close up shot that it's not far yeah. away, so you can't really, you know, you don't know whether if that that platform is going to be mu moving or if it's going to be like dropping down from the top of the screen and then eventually going away or whatever. It looks it's it definitely looks like it's moving in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. We just don't know what. Right. And that brings us to Fridays, quite possibly one of the most confusing screenshots I've ever seen. <laughs> but reading into it, it makes a lot more sense. So basically you've got Link and Samus streaking off into the clouds. Yep. So this is the new launch effect. The color of the streak will correspond to the player who has hit them. So, as in every Smash, like the first player is always red, then there's red, yellow, blue, green. I forget who is what color. Mm -hmm. I just know first player is always red. So, basically, you launch someone, you will know who's going to get the kill before they die, should they die. Oh, okay. Unlike all the other games where it's just, um, eh, wait until they die and then you'll figure it out. Yeah. I, and how the hell did I, you steal that? See, I, I guess the other thing I, you know, I, <laughs> well, you heard me say that, um, when we were talking about this image earlier in the week, uh, that I thought it was something that it was like some special attack of some sort or, or like mm -hmm. some kind of special jump. And I guess the reason why I thought that was because that the colors correspond to, like, the character themselves. Like, Link is green. He's wearing green, so therefore green streaks. And then Sam yeah. has some red in her suit, so therefore red streaks. Okay, I thought that's what it was, so that's yeah, why I was confused. I, I... But now that you explain the whole thing where it's like each color corresponds to the uh, player, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> Yeah, it's they really d the okay. So Sakurai's description is the impact launch effect has been powered up. The assigned color makes it clear which player will get points in the event of a KO. Mm -hmm. So it, I think it's a poor character choice to make green for Link and red for Samus because it's very well color coordinated. Yeah, if they had like the Wii Fitness trainer and they were flying off with red, and then they had like I don't know, Mario flying off with yellow, that would be a bit more clear. Right. It, it just just an odd choice. But but I, I am excited for that. I think I think the reason why Sakurai made that photo is just because just to really confuse people. <laughs> well that's that seems to be half of his job is just let's see how I can fuck with the fan base today. <laughs> yeah. Well with you heard the news coming out last week, right? Mm -hmm. About the single player? Uh, oh, I think I, I think you told me, but I don't. Uh... Yeah, there will be no cinematics in the next game because in Brawl, Sakurai found people were uploading the cinematics to YouTube, and that's not how he wanted them to be used. He wanted them to be used as more of an award for playing through the game, and so he's decided to. It's it's kind of confusing because of the translation. He's either decided to nix cinematics entirely or a single player adventure entirely I'm not sure which is which mm -hmm. but regardless something as big and bulky as the subspace emissary as much as I would love to see it come back if it doesn't it doesn't if yeah. they go back to like the classic story and adventure from from melee yeah. The melee adventure was tons of fun. I really liked it. Mm -hmm. It was no subspace emissary. Yeah, I I think I like subspace emissary just because it had it it 
gave a reason for all the characters to be there. Like there was one big issue that was going on. Like there was there was a good narrative that drove that brought like the reason why everyone is in you know in this whole fight and why they're in it together and like you know uh it's not just master hand that's you know in control mm-hmm. this whole thing it's it's some other kind of being. taboo yeah um so i i just thought that was kind of interesting just because it was a different it kind of just brought like a different um i don't know if like story or a uh, different angle to it yeah yeah it brought a different angle to it and i i enjoyed that very much yeah so our topic this week main topic is the metroid franchise and how it can probably be better represented within the confines of smash Mm -hmm. because outside of having a metroid as an assist trophy samus as a character in maybe three stages there really isn't much metroid representation in smash yeah just samus that's it Especially from a character standpoint. Yes, there's Samus and Zero Suit Samus, and they are very, very different. And the problem that I have with Zero Suit Samus is the fact that you have to execute the final smash to transfer characters. Yeah. I've been in so many situations where I am playing as Zero Suit or Original Samus, and a Smash Ball's out, and I want to grab it, but I don't want to use it to have to switch up my playstyle. Right. I really wish that they would split them up into separate characters. Well, there was also the secret that they had where you just... Well, I mean, kind of well, a secret, not really, but where you have to... Was it hold Z or something like that? You hold shield yeah. between player select and map select, and that'll let you start as zero suit. But for them to tout her as a new character, but then have to do that kind of shit to get her from the get-go, I don't like that. So, I want them to split them up, make them two unique characters. Well, they, they are unique, but two different characters on the select screen with unique final smashes that don't make them transfer. Okay. Now, do you think that only Samus should be at it? Only be be the only one in the roster? No. Um, the The problem with it is that you're dealing with in Metroid, enemies of quite a large scale. Yeah. I could see them adding like a space pirate but right. not Ridley because Ridley is too fucking big. Mm-hmm. Unless they m- scaled Ridley down so much. Well, I mean, Bowser's a pretty big pretty big character. Good point. And I so, could... so is okay. Didi. Yeah, um, I I can actually see some of the uh, some of the heroes that were in Metroid Prime Three. Mm. I could see I could see them being because each of them each of them had their own unique ability and things like that, and I th- I could see them being as individual characters as well. See, and this is why I wanted to talk to it with you because I never played through the third one. Jesus. <laughs> no, I I never played through the third Prime. Okay. Um, I got halfway through the second, lost interest, and just haven't gone back to it. Uh, the second is the weakest out of the three. Yeah, but I I, w- I was thinking either that or maybe Dark Samus. I mean, fuck, how many different versions of Samus have we had? We've had uh, the what is it? The corruption uh, Samus. The corrupted which is, which the, the corrupted first. Samus we've had in uh, Zero Mission, yeah. not Zero Mission. Fusion. Uh, Fusion. Thank you. We had Fusion Suit Samus. Mm-hmm. We had the what, whatever the fuck that parasite was version of Samus. You have all these different iterations of her. The problem with that is that they would be clone characters. Yeah. I would like to see them all as suits, and they kind of did do that for Brawl with a couple of the suits. Mm-hmm. Well, I could see the... Because um, the corruption suit, Samus, uh, she... the cor- I said corruption suit, Samus, because it's not Samus. It's just... It's Metroid Prime, just as... Uh, yeah. And just looks like Samus. Because... Um, she had or it had 
like similar features like as far as attacking but like yeah i don't know there were there were certain things that it could do that were that was different um, so you'd be you'd be looking at something along the lines of say mario and luigi differences yeah where like the same core is there but the special attacks are different enough so that they are completely unique yeah i could definitely see like maybe if uh if they had corruption uh if they had met met i think it would just be called like metroid prime Samus or something like that because uh, I because that's what they call it or whatever because it, it that's just what it says above the name at least from what mm -hmm. I remember from playing uh, Metroid Prime 3 like years ago it's been a while but I definitely want to play that again because um, it, it's it is Metroid Prime so I could kind of see like the final smash being something where it'd be similar to something like Samus's final smash where she does the big fucking blast but instead of maybe f just like knocking him off stage it does like consistent corrosive damage like over time or maybe hmm. or maybe or maybe she just drops like uh patches of the um, phase on yeah the phase on like in Ooh, random that would spots, be cool. Like random spots of the map, and then so like if you know if you hit them, you it slows you down and does corrosive damage, uh, like over time and things like that. Like I could kind of see those being the two, or um, maybe it kind of like it would break out of the suit and kind of go into its like uh, Metroid Prime Squiddy form, and then kind of yeah, like, like the crab form or whatever it was at the end of the first game. Yeah, and then like kind of like. Uh, well, no, because that was the first form, and then the second form was like it was like a Metroid where it was the big brain. Okay. It was a big floating face with like, with like uh, squid-like tentacles floating around it. Doesn't it turn into Mother Brain? No. Because Metroid Prime is a prequel to the original Metroid games. Oh, you know, I yes i think so actually because i remember seeing videos of uh if you beat it on the hardest difficulty with, within a certain amount of time with a certain percentage of collecting all the items uh mm -hmm. yes i believe it does become mother brain okay um, but yeah i can kind of see it like breaks out of the suit becomes its squid form and then creates the phase on uh like pools or whatever yeah, that would be neat. I was thinking for a level to have it duplicate the final boss fight from Metroid Prime, where you're constantly just going down level by level, mm. and so it's basically an underground cavern, Yeah. but Metroid Prime could show up and just fucking attack you with a random, random attack yeah. th from the four different types. Right. But that, of course, would assume that Metroid Prime was not a playable version of Samus. Yeah. I would actually like to see, if not Ridley, I would take a generic space pirate. Because I think they could be completely unique enough yeah. from, a, from a gameplay standpoint. Yeah, because they, um, they're like different kinds. I mean, they can like turn invisible. They can... Uh you know hug walls um they can i mean they're they're really dangerous in at close combat and they fire projectiles so yeah yeah no I, there's there's definitely opportunity there yeah the the thing that worries me though is the fact that this version of samus and sakurai has made this comment in the past visually samus has always been based off of the super metroid model this one is based off of other m yeah. So I feel like Other M is going to be a bigger influence on it than the Prime trilogy. Which <laughs> which is kind yeah. of funny because Other M was from I never played it, but I heard across the board the reviews were not great. Yeah. I I never even touched it. You can get it off Amazon for 6 bucks right now. <laughs> New. Yeah. Well, I mean, I heard that like from a gameplay standpoint, wasn't that bad. It's just the fact that the whole narrative standpoint was really terrible. Yeah, basically what they had done is they'd taken... 
every Metroid game starts off with what has now become colloquially known as being Metroided, where you lose all your kick-ass abilities right at the get-go yeah. by some big enemy or some shit like that. This way, though, in Other M, it's just you can't use that until you get authorization from all of your overlords or whatever. Oh. So it does... She's not by herself. She's not a bounty hunter. It's not you alone in a desolate alien location like every other Metroid has been. It's right. all Metroid has always been about being alone and exploring. And that's where they changed it up with Other M. They tried to make it more combat and story driven and well that was because ninja theory worked on it right exactly yeah yeah that it, be but <laughs> but that's i mean hey they tried something different with it it was a hybrid of 2d 3d combat it was it was different i just hope that that doesn't because that left a sour taste in so many people's mouths i hope that that's not their primary inspiration for Samus going forward. Yeah. In general, not outside of Smash. Just in general, I don't want other M to be the benchmark for the future. Oh, please don't. Well, plus the other th the other thing was is that Samus from the beginning, like everyone thought that she was a kick-ass bounty hunter and all these things and, you know, don't mess with her or whatever. We like she was like a strong female character and then in once other M came around, she was like the like kind of girly, like high schoolish, flirting kind of girl or whatever. Yeah, then that's not Samus. <laughs> yeah, which it just like brought her down a couple of pegs of badassery. So it's kind of disappointing. <laughs> yeah, I I could see them instituting all the different types of Samuses that we've talked about as different skins. I don't see them implementing them all as unique characters. Right. I would love to see them split Zero Suit and Traditional. Okay. And pull in another character. The obvious choice is Ridley. Mm -hmm. But uh, like you said, in 3, there's the squad mates, I guess, because I haven't played it. I can't talk to it. <laughs> Alright, so basically in 3, what it was is like, there were, you had, like, comrades kind of mm -hmm. like they weren't really with you but they they were there to aid you every now and then or when it called for it but mm -hmm. they didn't stick with you during the entire mission they were there to they were it, they were actually other bounty hunters i think and each one had like a unique ability like one was like just this person and a giant freaking robot uh <laughs> another one was kind of like this like Silver Surfer, but like was ice, so um, Frozone. So it was Frozone. I yes, I guess it was Frozone. <laughs> sure. Sounds like it was Frozone. Um, I I think it I think it was ice. I think that's what it was. Um, then then it's Frozone. I don't know. And then there were there were some other ones too. But yeah, I could see like the other bounty hunters that were in Metroid Prime Three. I could see them being characters because each of them were unique in their own way and they had different abilities so I could see them being like different fight styles and and whatnot see and and that's that's what I love about Smash is that they can pull those characters in and I've never played those games and that'll make me go oh what the fuck is that that's the reason why I played all the Metal Gears mm. it's because of Smash so please please do that bring those other characters in. I th I think they'd be perfect the way you're describing them. Yeah. Absolutely. At least as assist trophies. Any of these characters would be fantastic as assist trophies. Yeah. Space, a Metroid Prime. Space Pirates. Oh, God. It'd be great to call in a fucking Space Pirate Squadron. Yeah. Ridley. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. No, they could they could probably do Ridley. Yeah, they they could definitely pull off Ridley. Now then, my question is, what items would you bring over? Because right now, all I know from Metroid that we have is a screw attack. Mm -hmm. Which um, is not what it sounds like if you haven't played Metroid. <laughs> uh, oh man, I'm trying to think. Uh, I could see... I could see it more as a as a smash attack, but that's it's already established as to what smash attack Samus has. 
Um, I I would like to see Hyper Beam because Hyper Beam was in Super Metroid and it was actually also in uh, in some of the Metroid Primes actually as well. Um, okay. It was in there. It was if you remember in the um, in the very first Metroid Prime when you're mm. fighting against Metroid Prime and then when she when it like makes the pools of uh, Phazon. And you get yeah. If you you go, there's a certain point where like you hurt it and you damage it, but if you go like go walk into the phase on, like your cannon becomes completely different, and you just fucking fire it, and it just shoots this like yeah beam like right out of it. That's the hyper beam. So I could see hyper beam being used in there, but again, it's they've kind of already established what the final smash attack is. So it, yeah, uh, I don't think you could do much in way of. Items. I think yeah. basically screw attack, maybe an energy tank for health. Mm-hmm. But but that's about it. What I would actually like to see is a level based off of her ship. Her ship has not been featured in a smash, and it fucking needs to be. Well, her ship is kind of small. Like I mean, maybe if it's like the outside of it, yeah. Like I yeah, mean... the, the, no, that's that's my thought is that you would be fighting outside of it, mm-hmm. and it would be traveling from planet to planet. Yeah. So you would touch down and all of a sudden you'd be on Talon fo- Talon 4. Oh. Oh my and god. And then it Sorry. then it get ready to take off and then you'd land on another planet from the series. Right. Or you'd land on any of the space stations. Like if it were a Metroid tour. Mhm. That would be a fucking phenomenal level. Make it happen. <laughs> um Yeah, no, they they can definitely do uh, going to different planets over time because that was something that was that was really I thought was really cool in uh, Metroid Prime Three because you could go into the ship like it went you can go into it and then yeah. it would be like a first person perspective and then you could like choose like which planets you want to go to and I can totally see that being being integrated in there. Yeah, the, I that would be phenomenal because you haven't seen her ship in Brawl. Other than a trophy. Yeah. And it's just wasted potential there. There's a lot more that they can do to capitalize on Metroid. Not necessarily, I think, from an assist trophy or even a character perspective. Even though I would like to see more, mm-hmm. given that they do have the limited roster, I don't see many of these characters going in. Fuck, I think we'd be lucky if they split up Zero Suit and regular Samus. I could see... Um... I could see more levels that are uh, mm-hmm. that are kind of like based off of the Metroid Prime series, like much like how Brawl did it, uh, where it was the uh, the Queen Forget Parasite, Orpheum. yeah, like the Queen Parasite oh. room. Um, but I think I kind of want to see some where it's like Super Metroid. I mean, I know they're trying to push other M, like as as the yeah. Metroid that they're trying to go for for this one. But I kind of want to see some some like you know old school levels of like either Metroid or or Super Metroid. That's that's where the uh, Samus's ship tour would work perfectly. You could have it touch down in the landing spot for every game. Yeah. You could land in the where where was it Omega? I don't uh, remember the name of the planet of Super Metroid. Uh, planet Zebes. Oh, okay, Zebes. Fuck, I'm dumb. Z B E S. Zebes. Z e b e s. There we go. That's the one. Yeah. So you could have that happen with this. You could transcend all the Metroids except for the first one because that one didn't have her ship. Right. But it it would be really cool, and I think I think that's the best way they should do it is more levels. Plus, there were some rooms in uh in Super Metroid that kind of stood out more than some of the other ones, mm-hmm. like uh. Oh shit! I mean the uh, the space pirate, um, or no, not the space pirate. Uh, the um, the research facility that's in the beginning of oh Super yeah Metroid. Fuck oh, yeah. yeah! That could totally t- be a fucking the mission. fucking title screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could totally be a level. Like, why the fuck would they not do that? Fucking come on, Jesus! Yeah. What's What's really interesting is some of the other trophies in I believe. It's in melee. If you look at the the um, there's a trophy of 
the Metroid, the the last Metroid in its tank, if you look at it super close, the reflection reflects that research facility mm. in the trophy in Smash. Oh, okay. Yeah, they gotta include that shit. I'm sorry. Yeah. More levels, more levels. Give us more Metroid levels. I'll be happy. Yeah, because they only had they only had two in Brawl. well three, I think. Was it three? Because oh well, let's research. <laughs> Clickety clack away. I know that they had one in uh, Melee, the one where it was uh, the one where the what was it? There were Crate. Crade oh. would pop up and just slash shit. That one drove me nuts. Brinstar Depths is the okay. one you're thinking of. Brinstar and Brinstar Depths were the two from Melee. Okay. And then in Brawl, we have... We had we had the one that was uh, where I had the lava. Like the lava wave come at you and you had to get into the, the pod. Norfair. Norfair, that's the one. And Norfair. Then, and then the other one that we mentioned earlier, with the Parasite Queen. Yes. Those those are the only two. Wow. Those. Oh wait, no, they did bring back Brinstar from Melee. Okay. They brought back Brinstar. There was Norfair and Parasite Queen. So you had three. Okay. So, fucking research facility for God's sake. Yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of really want that now. <laughs> if if they can't do research facility, then do the planet tour. Yeah. Oh my God, the planet tour. Yeah. <laughs> Like the, could you see the planet tour kind of being like Final Destination, where it's like the background kind of changes like over time, or something like that, or kind of like, it, or well, more like, like uh, I'm thinking of the, what is it, um, the Kirby level. Yeah. I, I yeah, like Halberd, or I see it more being like a Delfino Plaza. Okay. Where you'll be fight, 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 fight. All of a sudden, you see the ship start to shake and rumble. So you know, fuck, got to get to the ship. If you're not on the ship and it takes off, it's an instant KO. Right. That kind of an idea. Okay. Ooh, because then they could, they might be able to even rotate around the ship so that the plane slowly turns. So you fight from the front to the back or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Let them figured out <laughs> but yes there's so many more levels so that's our conclusion <laughs> yeah definitely well i mean levels and i i think i definitely agree with you more characters because there's only i mean in brawl there's technically two but technically um i i want to see more individual characters i guess like mm -hmm. you said yeah so that brings us to our half hour yes it is uh what is our topic next week, Wally? Uh, I was actually thinking that um, because Mega Man was introduced, what other Capcom characters can we see as, like, playable potential characters? Yeah, potential playable characters. And now that Capcom's on board, like, and I know that they're trying to limit on how many characters they can have, if there's any other third-party Develop uh, third party, yeah, I guess developers or companies that we can definitely see other characters being in it. So kind of like it's kind of a third party characters. Yeah, basically. third party characters that definitely see like more. Like, what do we want? What do we think? What would work in something like Smash? All right. Well, thank you all for tuning in. Mm -hmm. Follow me at Darren Bell on Twitter and subscribe to us on iTunes. Yeah, that's yeah, a new yeah. thing. Yeah, iTunes. And here as well on Twitch. You can subscribe to my Twitch. And also, I am on Chris Walzik, W-A-L-C-Z-Y-K. Yes, it's very long. I'm sorry. Uh, and what else is there? Oh, yeah, and our Utterly, Utterly Geek Twitter account as well, because we don't want to forget about that as well. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> yeah, just find us on iTunes under Utterly Geek. That's G with threes. Utterlygeek.com. Subscribe. Leave a review. Yes. I'll read your name. Not a future <laughs> episode. I won't read the review. Now read the name. <laughs> Might That's call you a dick if it's a low rating, but yeah. well, about it. You know, or if people say negative things, I mean, maybe. No. Okay. It's the internet. That's true. All right. Bye. Goodbye, everybody.